Joining us right now, Mary Jo Botafuco. Mary Jo, how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm great, thank you. Excellent. You have got a new book out that is stirring up quite a bit of controversy. Uh, the new book, Getting It Through My Thick Skull. Tell us a little bit about the book. It's probably exactly what the title says, right? <laughs> it, it's based on a story that was all of my life growing up. My mother uh, would always start each frustrating sentence that she had with me with Mary Jo, when are you going to get it through your thick skull? Constantly growing up, ah, when are you going to get it through your thick skull that you can't do this or can't do that? And all those years later, I got shot in the head, and I was in a coma, and I was in a coma for three days, and when I woke up, I just remember them saying to me, you've been shot in the head, and I was like, oh my God, you know, how did this happen? And looking at my family, standing over my bedside, and I put my hand out, and I reached out to my mother, and I said, you see, Ma, this thick skull really came in handy. (laughs) And I made them laugh, and they kind of realized, okay, she's going to be all right. That was like my attempt to kind of ease their pain, because I can't imagine what they were going through for those three days. And so uh, what I was wondering, like for people that don't know, I mean, obviously most people know this story here, but your husband, Joey Bonifuco, was having an affair with Amy Fisher, who was underage at the time. She came to your house for whatever reason, confronted you, and ended up shooting you in the the head. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, You know, I had no idea who she was or what she was. And what happened was when this happened, Joe swore to me up, down, and sideways that She was a customer of his, which she was, and her family, her parents were too, at his auto body shop. And he convinced me and our families and all of our friends that she was just a crazy, obsessed teenager, which wasn't too hard to believe at the time, because obviously she managed to pull a gun out and shoot me in the side of the head without any provocation. So it's kind of easy to say, yeah, there's something wrong with this girl. Uh, But he convinced us quite fully and wholly that he had nothing to do with her for a long time. So is that what a lot of people ask themselves why you stayed with him after this whole thing? Is that what it was that you believed that she was just crazy or was it that you kind of had that like battered women syndrome thing where they forgive the well, uh, the bad yeah, guy? looking back, I mean, there was a number of factors. The first one, obviously, was I was too sick to go anywhere. I mean, I had almost died. I had surgeries for a couple of years. I had blood transfusions. I mean, a really bad time, a lot of pain, a lot of medication. I was in a fog. Um, I also, you know, had that nice, strict Irish Catholic upbringing where you don't get a divorce. Mm -hmm. And my children were little at the time, and they were very traumatized at the fact that Mommy was almost murdered in front of our home. And finally, what what I finally figured out after all this is I was married to a very good sociopath who lied to me and lied to everybody and had us all convinced and believing that what he said was the truth. I see. So you think that he's, like, certifiably a sociopath? Well, after many years and much thought, I have come to that conclusion. It was in a conversation that I had with my now 27-year-old son, who was 12 at the time this happened. We were talking about it, his father, and he said to me, Dad is a sociopath. And I, I couldn't wrap my head around that word. I, I thought it meant like a monster or a murderer like, like Charles Manson or Ted Bundy. Mm-hmm. And then I started reading about it and realizing, like, oh, my God, you know, 99.9% of so what we would call clinical sociopaths are walk among us and they just make chaos in our lives. They're charming and they're funny and they're smart. But they, the, pro, the sociopath is that they have no conscience or remorse or guilt about anything that they do. They go through life thinking it's everybody else's fault and everybody else is wrong and they're not. And they, they convince you to that point to, you know, for a long, long time until you understand what it is they have and then you can get out of it. I see. And so luckily you're out of it now. Is life good for you at this point? Oh, life is so good. You know, the book is a 17-year journal of everything that I lived through. And and my life now is so wonderful. And I I look back and I say, you know, I lived in this chaos for all of my life and wasn't aware of it because I was with Joe since I was 17. And I I never understood what was wrong. And now that I kind of know, I want to share the information with people and so that anybody out there might have this kind of a, a relationship, whether it's with your child or a parent or your spouse or a coworker, that maybe, you know, this is the problem. And if so, the bell can go off and you can say, you know what, I've got to get out of this relationship because mm-hmm. it's never, ever going to change. And that's, that was really the point of writing the book, hopefully to inspire people. Excellent. Very good purpose for that. Obviously, uh, big news about Joe uh, suing you about the book here. What do you think is going to come of that? You think you're going to win that one or you think there might be a little, some shaky facts in the book? <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, a typical sociopath, he doesn't think he's wrong. He thinks I am. And, and you know, he's, I'm defaming his character, and I had to laugh when I thought of that. It's like, <laughs> I'm defaming your character by calling you a sociopath? I think he's taken care of that himself over the years. Yeah, he, I, I don't think much is going to come of it. Excellent. Well, it was great to talk to you, Mary Jo Botafuco. The book is Getting It Through My Thick Skull. Sounds like a, a good read for anybody, and especially people that are in kind of uh, shaky relationships like that or yeah. dealing with a sociopath. It's been good talking to you, and I'm glad to hear uh, your life's on the right track, Mary. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Big J. I appreciate and it. Have a good one. Bye-bye. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10 on Billings' number one hit music station, Hot 101. Nine.